welcome back to my channel. My name is Eltonin, and here we talk about fashion, lifestyle, and media with a little bit of an alternative twist. Update, I cut slits into my eyebrows. I did that on a whim. Um, I keep doing it every couple of months, and then they grow back, and I forget to trim them again. And then when I have my eyebrows again, I'm just like, well, I might as well cut slits into them. So I did. So that is the current update of the appearance. I also got my side shaved, so they're no longer making wings. Today's video was going to come. It just ended up being a lot sooner than I expected. For anyone who's not, like, super keeping track of everything Lynx Club does, they released like a teaser trailer for the new like the new reboot season of their show a couple days ago and we get to see the outfits of the characters it's it's not great it's not it's not great um as someone who very much loves character design and like doll design and everything i was very excited for the new lynx club well the new new lynx club there was the live action Winx club which was and now there's the new lynx club reboot which i'm still excited for because trust me i will watch anything there's a fire truck back on topic to the Winx reboot i was very excited about it seeing the outfits i was disappointed in the sense that um, for anyone who's watched my miraculous ladybug um, video, and, or even just watched Miraculous Ladybug. It looks like Miraculous Ladybug, and that's not a compliment. We're going to be going through our six main Lynx Club characters, and talking about how I would style them for the reboot. Anyways, let's get started. For our first girly, we have Miss Bloom. Now, Bloom is kind of the main character of pretty much everything, because she's the fish-out-of-water type. I think for Winx Club, I don't yet have a story for them, just because I'm waiting to see what the new Winx Club does with it. Uh, it's set in, like, a high school, so I imagine it's going to be high school drama and everything. But the storyline is so new that I can't, like, put on a spin on it, just because I did end up, especially since the first couple seasons, ended up re being really, really good. So it's kind of hard to be like, oh, here's how I would do the story better, when I'm like, so I just do the first decent story. I just do those seasons. I just do that. Uh, <laughs> so when it does come out in the next five years, because it keeps getting delayed, I will do another video on rewriting the story if it ends up being bad. If not, I'll end up being like, this is all the reasons why it's good. But outfit wise, I can talk about it now. So for a couple of the characters, I've entirely changed their vibe, but I did try to keep like their color scheme roughly about the same. I like when creating characters to give each individual character their own. Uh, I'd like to give each character their own distinct aesthetic. And I know Winx Club has a lot of people in very, very similar outfit vibes. And that's just not how I roll. That's just not how I like to do my character designs videos each of them got their own like specific things for our main girly bloom i wanted her to lean very much into like the, the pinks and blues and be very cutesy like very very cutesy i want these bigger silhouettes of the sweaters and the pant legs i love this like little argyle print the lady with the cropped shirt and little pleated uh, skirt is wearing i really like that because a couple of her outfits have this like slightly uh, not business casual but slightly more formal preppy kind of vibe to it, and I really wanted to like, include that. I did end up going a little bit down a rabbit hole for a couple of these outfits, where I think this was the first one I ever pinned, and then I kept scrolling, and I kept finding more people that had these similar outfits. So, they all have a very similar vibe, just because they ended up being, like, recommended from each other. But I really like these bigger silhouettes. I love, an, like, a little bit of a cardigan. I love the little stripes because one of the outfits that blew more in the original series did have this little stripe. So I have that right over here. And then I also have it over in the corner over there with the little star. I think because she's the fire fairy, I want her to have little, um, like fire embellishments to it. Fire embroidery, fire embellishments. I really love that she's not leaning super into, like, oranges and reds and yellows like ah yes the fire fairy is in 
warm colors. I love that she's in blues and I really want to keep that there. I really want to keep that there but any time she would have like a symbol. It'd be like a little fire so instead of the star on the striped shirt it'd be a little flame symbol. And then I have hairstyles for her over in the corner over here. I really wanted to keep a lot of the girlies in this like fairy core hair with like the little braids and the little trinkets in the braids and everything. Lots of layered jewelry on like the around the neck and the wrists. I did want to give Bloom specifically main character hair. I know she's already a redhead but right in that far far the furthest picture with the blonde streaks I want Bloom to have blonde streaks in her hair. I want Bloom to have blonde streaks in her hair just because having very unique hair to your main characters, or even just your characters in general, will make them the most amount memorable because people will be like coming to hairstyles being like, oh, I want bloom hair. And everyone knows what that means. Oh, I want Draculaura hair. Everyone knows what that means, right? Like give her something that's like, ah, that is the bloom hair. I want bloom hair. I would have bloom with a little, little, little blonde streaks in her hair. Aisha, I love Aisha. I love Aisha. She keeps being done so dirty, so dirty. And she keeps being, Aisha, the love of my life. One of my favorite characters probably ever is done so dirty all of the time all of the time every season that comes out she has been whitewashed her role has been diminished her interests have been pushed to the side when she's one of the coolest characters okay she's one of the coolest characters one of the most interesting characters but no 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 at least that's what i one thing i can say about the reboot aisha is no longer a white girl she is back to black as she should be, as she was. What is it? Oh, what's that like clip? What is it? Whose white baby is that? That's me at our Aisha. I'm like, who? Who? Mm -mm. That's not my girl. That's not my girl. I love that she's in like running clothes all the time. I love that she's in athletic wear. I love that she's like ready to go at all times. And I really wanted to keep that vibe. I did not want her to be in blue. I know she's a water fairy. She is not being in blue because she's a water fairy. Why? Because Bloom is in blue. Bloom is in blue. So Aisha needs to be in contrasting colors. All right. So Bloom is in blue and pink and Aisha is in purple and green because they contrast but match the fire and water that each of them are the fairies of. Like I would love for Aisha and Bloom to kind of be at each other's throats for a little bit like ev like every what is it that like competition thing where everything you can do I can do better with a friendly competition but like a rivals type situation where they're going at each other they both respect each other very much and just because the fire and water don't mix or blah 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 blah, blah something happens and then they're like oh my god we can use them together because their colors are not like opposite sides of the color wheel their colors are complimentary and they met and I'm just really really into the idea of having fire and water characters be on opposite sides if my D&D players are watching yeah you know what it's about so for Aisha her biggest colors are going to be green and purple, lots of like sneakers and um, like athleisure wear, exercise wear. I was really in love, mostly just for merchandising purposes, Winx Club Varsity jackets, okay? I'm obsessed with the idea of every single <laughs> piece of media I own having an in-universe varsity jacket you cannot have your characters be set in a school and not have one of them in a varsity jacket especially if you're trying to go for a more like 90s y2k aesthetic like where is the varsity jacket and sell the varsity jacket i i don't know what about me likes that varsity jacket so much or like the varsity jacket barmer jacket shape but i do i eat it up okay Give me the varsity jackets. So, she should be the girly with the varsity jacket. It should be really cool. And you should be able to get one in each one of the Winx Fairy Club colors. And there should be the Winx Fairy Winx Wings on the back of the Winx varsity jacket. 
let me at your merchandising table, please. <laughs> um, so Aisha's so folks so cool. Aisha's so cool. I love her so much. I could ramble on about her forever. We're gonna move on to her hair. I really wanted to keep like these like hints of purple and like mix in I really wanted to keep these like hints of purple and mix in like a little bit of blondes um trinket hair like I said for bloom with like the fairy core hair biggest thing for me for Aisha is I want my girly and goddess braids why are you eating fake flowers you are not starving Did you know that? Did you know that you're not starving? Hold on, I have to redecorate because my cat is so starving and she's so skinny. She's so skinny, aren't you, baby? Tell the people of your crimes. Confess your sins. Confess. Anyways, I want Aisha to have goddess braids because they look really good. And honestly, with her hair being just loose and curly, as someone lo loose and curly hair, oh my god, her curl routine must be one, fantastic, and two, take so long and honestly if she wants to wear her natural hair as she should as she should but give her protective styles because they're cool and more thing more things should have protective styles speaking of goddess for the protective styles did you guys see that annabeth chase is gonna have goddess braids in the second season I'm so ex I was such a big proponent of like give her goddess braids on Cersei's island. I'm so excited about it. Oh my god. <laughs> I love Aisha. I so I keep saying I'm gonna move on, but I keep thinking about her and I'm like, she's I don't think Aisha is probably one of my like top ten characters. And I love that for me. I love the concept of Musa, and I think the execution ends up be falling flat because she's not interesting enough and i think her style just ends up being really really basic compared to the rest of them especially for being like the fairy of music in my version and the true version musa is punk or goth or alternative why because it, that is a music based subculture and two because in every six-person girl group, you need the alternative one, and Musa is one of the alternative ones. Okay, one of them. Hold on. Is constantly in headphones. You know who the coolest fucking people are who are constantly in headphones? Punks. Goths. People who listen to music. People involved in a music-based sub subculture. I think it'd also be really fun for her to start, okay? Because the thing is, is that I want to see more stories where the people, like, become alternative or like more lean into it where they start off as like but she keeps getting interested in like the darker things or like the witches maybe i know i said at the beginning i didn't have like a plot line as i'm speaking i am and that's how i discover everything single story i make i just start talking and sometimes things come out okay here's my plot line for musa all right she starts off looking like everybody else in like tiny tops little skirts and everything big boots and she's going about there, and then the goth and alternative kids are the witches, alright? They're actually really cool, they just are rebellious and think that the government and the ruling classes are bad at their jobs, and blah 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 issues, socio-political issues. They're rebelling against the system, and muses with, like, Bloom and Aisha and Stella and all of those friends, and they're like, Ugh. Ew. But Muse is like, oh my god. But like... What if I think like them? And then she goes on a whole journey where she joins the witches and like gets into this darker aesthetic and she's finally like, oh my God, like this is who I am. And then she finally unlocks fucking Enchantix or whatever the big transformation that they've decided is the new big transformation. Like she struggled to, like she can do the other 
transformations, but she's never been able to do the big one, and everyone else has been able to do the big one, and she feels like she's being left behind. Stop being plastic. Can you give me 40 minutes to not be a menace creature? No, I don't think she can. Anyways, Musa can't do the big transformation, and she's trying to do it and trying to do it, trying all these ways, and she feels like she's being left behind, and then she goes off and has an arc where she... Ma'am. This is because you like to eat things you're not supposed to. All I want to do is spoil you, and you repay me by stabbing me with your knife feet. You have food. I think I have to go watch her eat. Come on, terrible. Your food bowl is not full of food. And it's so empty and you are so starving. The menace has received attention and had ate while I pat her butt. We're back to Musa. Anyways, we were talking about how Musa had wanted, like, had a whole arc of, like, joining the witches and then, like, being more interested in this dark aesthetic and taking it on and finally, like, finding herself and, like, who she wanted to be and what she wanted to do and, like, re really leaning into this, like, darker vibe but not being a witch and being a fairy still and then coming back and she's finally able to do her Enchantrix big transformation for the biggest one, the most important one until the next season or there's another most important one. <laughs> she's finally able to do that since she becomes herself again. When she's finally able to do this big transformation, she's finally comfortable in herself and who she wants to be and everything. Hair-wise, there's a couple of things you can do with her hair. I wasn't, I don't know, I really like the pigtails of this blue one right here. I thought that was the closest thing to Musa's hair. I really like the, the little ponytails for these two. I thought that was the closest thing to what Musa has already. Um, keeping in line with like a more edgier vibe. Like if I could go crazy, I would absolutely give my girl a mullet. I think she would rock it. I think she'd look so good. I love the bright blue on her. I'd make it even brighter because right now she's got like a darker blue. I'd make it st her start off with a darker blue. And when she realizes her darker aesthetic, it turns into a brighter blue. I like the one right up here with all the little braids for bangs. I do want to keep Musa's bangs. I think Musa's bangs are really iconic part of her. Plus also if you've been to any kind of alternative space, we all be cutting bangs into ourselves. I have bangs, you have bangs, your know, mama has bangs. Bangs and alternative people just go hand in hand. We can't stop cutting bangs. All right, and now you may be saying, Eltonin, stop making Sabrina Carpenter characters. Not every character in every piece of media needs to have Sabrina Carpenter. And I would say, that's incorrect. I love her. Anyways, in the same way that Sabrina Carpenter is Hera from Laura Olympus, Sabrina Carpenter is Stella from Winx Club. You cannot tell me that those giant go-go boots, the big blonde hair, the bangs are not giving Stella. She gives Stella all the time, and as she should, because she slays. In fact, the only difference between Stella and Sabrina Carpenter is that Stella is very much more warm-toned spring, and Sabrina Carpenter is more cool-toned summer. That is inconsequential, because the vibe, the vibe, like her in this orange outfit right over there with those white boots, that is Winx Club. That is Stella to the Mac. This little fairy, like, lightweight outfit that she's got on over here. The little pink number over in this corner. This is Stella, okay? This is Stella. Sabrina Carpenter is Stella. Cast her in a movie where she gets to be a little pink, a little, like, pink and yellow pretty fairy princess. And we would all eat it up. Hold on, I have to... This strand of hair is anno annoying me, so we're clipping it back so it stops being where I don't want it to be. 
Anyway, speaking of Stella, with her being the rich girl, I did decide on a brand because all of my like rich girl girlies for my redesigns always have to have like a luxury brand that I associate them with. I picked Miu Miu for Stella just because of like the accessories seemed really like flirty and like cutesy seemed more like flirty than like super cutesy and has this like old money but with an edge kind of vibe which i thought really fit her so Miu Miu is stella's brand and i have her of her in lots of like very sabrina carpenter-esque outfits with her it's like short and flirty with like midriff showing and the tiny little top to accentuate a shorter torso and tiny little tiny little skirts to accentuate the longer legs and giant go-go boots like that is Stella to me and I love Sabrina Carpenter and I will get tickets to her show I know they're sold out right now I am watching every single day for a decently priced ticket because I went to her first show and it was in like a little arena and it was very cute and like intimate and everything and now she blew up which I'm so excited for her okay you got to understand, I am so excited for Sabrina Carpenter to get her flowers, but I'm also like, I've been here for years. Give me the motherfucking tickets. This is what you get for being really into artists that nobody else is into, and then they explode and you're like, rude. Anyway, <laughs> Flora is very fun for me. Oh, hair-wise, real quick, it's going to be Sabrina Carpenter. Big, blonde, curly, curtain bangs is Sabrina Carpenter. Flora is i think the most fairy of the fairies if that makes sense like she's got the floral and the skirts and everything biggest thing for flora is i want her rarely ever in pants i want her in skirts and dresses and flowy things like i want her to look like she's a fairy fairy pretty like silky dresses would be flora's thing like florals and like plants like little strawberries and like bigger silhouettes that aren't necessarily like nipped in at the waist tiered skirts ruffles florals like girly is a pretty pretty princess and as she should be um so i'm kind of in love with all the pinks and purples for, i'm in love with the greens and pinks for her i think it also sticks her in like this really interesting place where she could be like a go-between between Aisha and Bloom whenever they're like bickering or whatever because she's wearing both of their colors so they're like in a, like a little trio of the like the of the six they're in of the six they're in a little trio where she's like she's the only one that can get both of them to like come to their senses or something hair wise I don't have a lot to say about Flora because she's so she's simple but not in the bad sense she's simple in the sense of like she doesn't have She's simple in the sense that, like, you can't go wrong with Flora. Like, she's so easy to get right because she's so just, and I love that, but it does make it hard to be like, oh, here's a storyline for her because she's just, like, she's she's stable. And I do like that in a character, but it does, like, more angst for Flora, please. Because Girlie is stable. And we love that for her. Like, one of these girlies has to be mentally healthy. <laughs> and it is Flora. <laughs> All right, now we get on to one of my greatest loves, and honestly, probably one of my favorite characters that gets done so dirty all the time, who actually looks good in the reboot. Like, she slays. She came here to slay, and she's the only one that does. Tecna is... I get so happy thinking about her because I love her. I'm a big fan of the one that... the autistic ones. I'm a big fan of the autistic characters. And for her, despite the fact that she slays in the reboot, personally, I would go even harder in the fact that everyone else looks like like little fairies and she just looks like she's out of some cyberpunk thing. Like she's fully alien to everything else. Like I love that for her. All right, I love it for her. And because Musa is in this darker palette now, Technus is not going to stand out as much when she's in tech wear cyberpunk or cyber goth so that is the beat that i went to for her like i want her in blacks and belts and like the pants and the boots and like holographic stripes that glows and led like led lights i want it all for techna because she deserves it 
she deserves to be the coolest one here. So I've got a lot of these different like tech it, like tech wear, like cyberpunk goth aesthetic outfits. It was difficult to find the perfect one, I will say. I've got like a holographic outfit right here, but for Tecta, my vision for her, and if there are any artists out there and you could draw this for me, I would be eternally grateful and love you forever because I cannot draw. Do not take this as a thing that I am making you draw. It is more so if you're already drawing, and you have another like 30 minutes to do it. And just watch, put one of my videos on the background and I would give you a big kiss on the cheek consensually in my mind. All right, so I grabbed a couple pieces of what I would want the Tecna outfit to be. So I'm gonna move myself over to the other side because it's hiding behind me, okay? Here is my vision for the Tecna outfit. This green outfit with the one sleeve, all right? The one sleeve is I want it to be um, like the green outfit right over here, I want the green bits to be the holographic. I do think it is possible to have too much holographic where it kind of looks tacky. So I would want like the green bits to be holographic where it's kind of like a spot of it. Kind of like this jacket right up in like the second to the last corner over there where it's got like the holographic in like accents to the clothing, not in the gray. I'd want her to be in black because that's what I would think makes it the pop the most. Other possibilities for a Tecna outfit is something like on the second to the, like right underneath the jacket, right there, all right, with all the belts and the chains. I would want those like belts and chains and harnesses to be holographic like in the last picture on the top, all right? Those would be holographic or they would glow like the middle picture right over here where it's like glowing like all the lines are glowing that is my vision where it's like the accents are holographic less so than like the full outfit is holographic but it's in these tech wear inspired things i want girly to be masked the fuck up be just because it's such a like part of the tech wear outfit and i think it would give her such a, like an interesting silhouette like she doesn't have to be fully masked all the time but she has like a mask like whatever she's in battle she has it on and everything like girly is a cyberpunk girly is space girly is futuristic and girly slays girly slays so hard because she deserves it because she's so cool and autism normal fashion influencers are not the only influencers give me crazy shit give me goth and grunge and cyberpunk and something give me something to be like ah finally alternative people in the girly media all right it can't just be the adams family there is more alternative people than that all right give me more characters to be compared to that don't fit at all all right wednesday adams is not the only character that wears black and Eddie Munson is not the only alternative man. There needs to be more, so I'm giving Winx Club the opportunity to do more. Hair-wise, like hair that she has right now, I think I would go more in a direction of having a two-toned hair for her, where it's kind of mixing this like bright purple and like bright pink in a shorter style. And if we do want it to be longer, having like a two-toned purple bang, or even because it's animated and you don't have to worry about the colors bleeding, the white, blonde, and the purple eat so hard. It eats so hard. And I would, I would be so obsessed. I'm already so obsessed with her, but it would look so good, especially if like the white is like UV reactive. And when those lights turn on and everything, her hair also glows. Imagine it. It would be so cool. I think I just want like a, like a girly show set in cyberpunk future. I think that's what I want and not <laughs> like I love my princess shows. I love my fairy shows. Also give me edgy cyberpunk girlies doing girly stuff, but it's just in the future and in space. And I think that's the last thought that I have for now, for now, because trust, I will be watching when Winx Club comes out and I will be talking about it. All right. I want to start doing a little bit more like... I want to just start doing more show reviews, but I need shows to come out that are actually interesting and not like, well, I watched it and I have no thoughts about it really, because most of my thoughts just come in with like those and being bad and that the clothing starts into like a spiral, but I want to figure out a way to like actually talk about like the media part of it. 
because I think I always just talk about the fashion. I want to start talking more about the media. If you've made it this far in the video, uh, let me know of the Winx Club seasons is your favorite or least favorite, but we all agree that the least favorite seasons are the one where Aisha is a white lady. I will, <laughs> as I slide down this chair like a little dark oil child, I will bid you adieu. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you guys all later. Bye! <laughs>